Hey there, welcome to the show. This is Jim Donovan. Thank you for tuning in. Today we have a very special show with filmmaker John Pritchard. He focuses on producing educational films that celebrate the positive side of humanity. His professional goals are to promote respect for all people and to help create a kinder world. John is such a wonderful soul. He's doing such good work. He's got a brand new movie called We All Just Need to Drum, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. It's my pleasure to introduce Mr. John Pritchard. John, hey man, I want to welcome you to the show. Thank you so much for taking the time. I know you're literally in the middle of finishing up the edits for uh, this film that we're going to talk about, We All Just Need to Drum. And I mean, how are you doing? You hanging in there? Oh, loving it. Loving it. Uh, anytime you feel you get to a point with your film, music, artwork, any project that it's it's in a place that you feel good about presenting is like I'm, I'm celebrating tonight with my wife. We're, we're going to have a, a serious Japanese dinner. We love oh. Japanese and we only do it that we keep it special so tonight she's like so are we gonna have a great Japanese dinner <laughs> that sounds good maybe I'll do that too that's a good idea yeah so just um to give to give my listeners some some context like tell me about yourself like what what led you to making documentaries I know you've been doing this for a while well, I was in uh, my senior year at St. Lawrence University, 1983, and I was a fine arts major, but I really uh, was focusing on filmmaking through video because video cameras were just kind of the a portable video camera. I think the first ones came out in like 1980, and I had uh, a... a a uh, mentor uh, that was a year ahead of me. And he was kind of a, this European dude who didn't belong in upstate New York. And he did some really cool things with his video work. You know, he was as an artist. So um, this, these really weren't films per se. These were more art projects. And I followed in his footstep because <clears throat> the department invested in a couple video cameras and you know they were pretty big they yeah. weren't broadcast but my senior year I got a grant um, during the winter term of January uh, I got a grant from the Gene Scribner endowment to go to China for two weeks uh, oh, wow. and film in Beijing, Xi'an, Luoyang, Nanjing and Shanghai and uh, China had just opened up to the West to tourism. My dad had a college buddy. Uh, my dad went to Williams College, which is where I live here in Williamstown, Mass, the, the northwest corner of Massachusetts. We border Vermont and, and New York State. And um, this friend of his, um, who ironically, we just heard from his wife yesterday because um, he's passed since, but he was the commercial attache for the uh, for the U.S. government in Beijing in 1983, and he kind of got me in to these really cool places that no one else could have with my little super eight millimeter camera. <laughs> what did you What did you film? Like what What did you? Get I you? filmed everything they would let me film. Uh, the only thing they didn't let me film was at a jade carving factory because it had secrets. Ah, like you know Secret there would be secrets. three or four jade carving masters who would look at a piece of jade and decide which one of the I think they had five or six kind of designs that would be the typical gift that would be carved in a huge mm -hmm. huge industry but the amazing thing about China at that time was there no cars oh wow very little electricity very few stoves that were powered by anything other than pig uh species <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah yeah but it was really um an eye opener to uh i didn't film with any audio all right it was it was strictly you know a visual and and then i actually incorporated incorporated the footage into my senior project presentation 
where I presented, I was playing with a very cool band up in uh, at Crane and Potsdam, which is about a half hour away. Uh, these musicians were professional musicians and I had chosen not to go to Berkeley, not to become a professional drummer. And uh, these guys were so great. And they played in this multimedia show where we projected the movie we projected film I had shot in the back of the, in the woods in back of the university I was going to and uh, crossed the film projector paths in some uh, saran wrap that was hanging down. So you got this like 3D sculpture of the film before you saw the film on the screen and a live band improvising. To the so, whole thing. Th and this was the 70s, wasn't it? 1983. 83. So, early 80s. All right, cool. Yeah. So, anyway, that's a long answer to how did I get into filmmaking? But that's, it's, I'm that's a true really, story. I'm super glad that I asked. You know, we're going to talk about your film, but I wanted to just get some, uh, sort of some, some backstory on, uh, you know, you've decided to do a film about drum circles and you know, and and you have this premise that you know, we all just need to drum more, which we'll definitely talk about in a second but like how how did you get to that point like when did you get excited about drumming like what's the deal with that yes well um being a lifelong drummer i had missed this entire arena that you and and arthur hall and all of these great uh wonderful uh I, I call you healers. Um, you know, you, you give service, but the, the drum is a healing tool, not a performance tool. And um, last year, Oath of Day was in my Respect for All movie, which was really addressing, um, you know, way before our, our current, you know, George Floyd protests and Black Lives Matter. But Otha has been uh, a part of Arthur Hull's training since I think 2012 and he's been a local guy who's done drum circle work with the schools with the elderly um, with the police uh, <laughs> and he had this little clip that I put at the beginning of that movie where he talks about what he does with group drumming and he uses it as a platform to open discussion about race, about economics, about education. And so at one point, in, and I put this right in the title sequence, a clip from that, where he goes, we all just need to drum. <laughs> and I love that so much, Jim, that I put that as kind of a pre-title to my movie, Respect for All. Yeah, I mean, I literally in the first... 20 seconds of the film you see on the screen we all just need to drum and i kept that visual for this movie it's the wow. same you know a title treatment um so that's where this movie started a, a year ago and i was like wow if i can afford it because these movies are are as an independent filmmaker uh i'm giving up my I have lots of clients, fortunately, from my New York City days, so I've been able to pick and choose, but I have to stop any outside income, <laughs> and it's like 10K a month, so the more months I work, the less I'm bringing in, and this, this movie just got out of hand when I started meeting all of you guys <laughs> who are, um, I had a movie in July, I had seven people, including Otha, locally that are drummers, uh, Greg Witt in North Carolina introduced me to Simon Faulkner in Australia, who is kind of the, the real healing with drum guy writing almost like a medical researcher. I was yeah, so amazing. impressed. And then he introduced me to Arthur and John Fitzgerald and everybody else. But how I got to you is through Serena pay in Hazelwood. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and she just loved the training you gave. And then of course, Mike Deaton, sure. he was able, he had your email. <laughs> so that's how we connect. Oh, that's, that's amazing. So I heard you say, so, so the guy you were talking about over oh, day, he, he does drum circles up your way in, in Massachusetts. 
And what are, what, now you and I know this, but for our listeners who, may, there's some out there that haven't drummed before. You know, what I'm hearing you say is it's, it's beyond entertainment. And it sounds like it's got a lot to do with um, the social part of being human. And um, yes, it's talk it's about very that a much. Bit? Yes, the the community aspect of uh, bringing uh, groups together through drumming is thousands of years old, and uh, we've lost it in the modern age. <laughs> we don't come together uh, to talk and socialize around a, a fire. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> but going way back, of course, that's how people socialized. They had to get their food during the day and then they would come together at night and drums all. I mean, it, it's so fascinating, isn't it? The history of drumming. Um, I got into it a little bit with the movie and I decided to keep that out of this film, but it may be something that we pursue because our heartbeat our connection to the daily cycles of the moon and the earth spin. And, you know, you can see behind me, you know, it's, it's no accident. We are connected to the universe. We don't get it though. We're so busy with our stuff. But I think when we come together in, in a group and we have drums and you don't need to know how to drum, right? That is the coolest right. thing. In, you know, some people say three minutes, some people say four minutes, but I think somewhere between three and five minutes, we entrain, we sync up, um, we start feeling the same pulse. It's very much like it, in a sports event when you all, you know, everybody's clapping and then somebody and everybody gets it. And um, as you see, as, as people will see if they watch the film, um, got this wonderful footage that opens up part one from Simon Faulkner in, in Australia uh, with him uh, leading a group of 10 kids, probably 12 year olds uh, in a call and response. And you can't, fairly sophisticated rhythms. And you know, these kids aren't drummers. So that says a lot about drumming and how everybody is a drummer. And I have to say, my friend, I never knew that really till this project. I just, I'm a pretty, a fairly accomplished drummer uh, and, and I'm, a, I'm a free jazz drummer. So yeah. you have to really be, have your chops and you also have to be very uh, open. And I have fortunately have a, a bass player and a flute slash sax player that are way better than I am, but they've played at the highest levels um, yeah. with phenomenal jazz musicians. Well, so we started of... playing it together in 2003 when I moved back to Williamstown after my um, wonderful career in New York City. <laughs> but that all has imbued my enthusiasm for music in general, but group drumming is something that not only brings people together, but as you know, it leads to healing. I mean, real healing, immune system. Uh, I, I just didn't know any of that. And I even got, uh, I met with some nurses and surgeons and put one of the surgeons in the opening of the film to just say, hey, we don't use it currently, but I think the entire medical establishment will be open to it because we know when you can bring the body, mind, and spirit together, which is what group drumming does, people feel better. And that's something that helps healing. Certainly. And, you know, I think, you know, as, as a professional musicians, you, you, you and I have had the experience of having one kind of training about music where um, in, whether it's classical, which was, was what I studied, so classical, and then I studied African drumming or jazz, all those things, like you need to have certain levels of proficiency to be considered a, a quote unquote player. <laughs> um, and if you're, and if you're not there, then you can, you, you might be called a hack. Yes. But, but for, 
for this modality, so drum circle, you know, what you said is, is I think it's right on where people, um, the only barrier is their own willingness right? Yes. And, and that's just something for out, people out there that, that, that maybe have never tried to drum before or, or have a, that very common idea that, oh, no, I can't because I'm really not good at rhythm or, or even worse, I, I have no rhythm. I've heard that a million times. When the, the truth is that it isn't, a, it isn't about the perfection of the music. That's not what a drum circle is. Of course, it's wonderful when it sounds good and, and usually it does. But the, all the benefits that you're talking about, John, are in the process, just yes. being with people and like hearing each other, feeling the vibration of, of all the drums in the room together, seeing people close their eyes, uh, you know, smiling afterwards, you know, all the high fives that I can't wait to do it again after, after all this pandemic stuff is done. So I'm, I'm glad that you, uh, that you went down that road a little bit. So how did you get from, uh, I love drumming, right, to, you know what, I'm just going to make a freaking full documentary about this thing. Like, like what's, like what sparked you? Was it, was it that one day with, with Otha Day or was it, a, uh, was it anything else that happened? Well, he tapped into something that I learned uh, in my New York City days. Okay, you've been to New York. Most people have been aware of New York. If they haven't been there, they've seen it in movies. When you live in New York City, and particularly when you're on the subways, you get to see a lot of people. <laughs> the whole span. And I just love that. You know, I, I lived in Argentina when I was uh, young from, from eight to 12 years old. And I got to see all of South America and Mexico before I was 12. And I just loved all of the different cultural variations and um, the ways that people live. And, uh, and on the subways in New York City, I got a lot of that. And what I was really surprised at, I, I was there 87 to 97, so 10, 10 years, and I just saw goodness. Now, of course, people, uh, I, I recommend that if you ever go to New York City, remove your fear because <laughs> you will attract it. <laughs> I saw a friend from Rochester. Her father hated New York City and had brought her up hating New York City. She came in. She got mugged the first hour she was in New York City. Oh. Now, I lived there for 10 years and I can count them on five fingers the times that I knew someone who got mugged or witnessed it. Fortunately, twice I got to be a, a superman and step in and save uh, a couple people. But if you go with a good attitude, you can see the world in a day. Yeah, that's a good point. Sorry, that was a long answer. But uh, what really touched me was how connected we are. So no matter where you're from, what language you speak, you smile and you connect with someone for a second on the street, on the subway. And then, you know, for me, I was an Apple computer guy. So I worked with Apple, helping people learn how to use the computer in 1987, 1988. Um, and then they would send me into big corporate clients. I, I had the facility to speak to people from high executive to secretarial level. Yeah. And I, I got to see people, I got to see people in their best, uh, most comfortable uh, working environment. And how do you open up to learning how to use the computer? And that is not that different than learning how to use the drum. I mean, mm. it's, it's a very different. Well, there's a willingness to, to be in. I, I remember that time, late eighties, I was just, just out of high school and, you know, the computers were just kind of getting on the scene and it was a brand, brand new territory and it didn't make any sense. And for someone who's never played a drum before, uh, I, I, I'm sure it's very similar to that. That's, that's a really great point. I would have never thought of that. Well, if I may, that 
is the answer to your question because that's how I see group drumming. Okay, now there's no <clears throat> there's no there's no Apple computer for group drumming. <laughs> there's Remo and and a couple other companies and Arthur and you know several thousand. I think it's in the tens of thousands now drum facilitators. Mm -hmm. But the reason why I believe a film like what we have now, We All Just Need to Drum, can work as a door opener to governments, to foundations, to people with money, to get drums out there. You know, and I'm talking everything from organized Department of Education and Health funding new drum circles, literally, and also getting foundations to fund and buy up handmade drums that are sitting in warehouses and, and, and stores uh, and get them out to the people and, and start really fulfilling that dream of Baba Olutunji, a drum in every home. Now yeah. we had a piano. I think mm -hmm. a lot of people kind of had a piano and some folks never played their piano <laughs> like a lot of drums i think sit and never get played they're beautiful but with the drum and a drum circle people can get together and i've been surprised i'm sure you have too even over zoom i've seen people drumming together of course you can't drum and hear each other at the same time because of the latency of the phone system but you can have someone solo and you can play along to that. And then someone else can solo and they can play along with that. And I've witnessed entrainment over Zoom. Yeah. I mean, that is crazy, right? Well, it's it's the thing that we, I think we're wired to be together. Like we, we have an innate biological, psychological, emotional need to be together and I think this the Zoom explosion is you know part of its necessity because people need to work, but it, not all of it. You know, like what you're talking about, and you know, this is something that I do too. Is you know we we need to find ways to still connect uh, because the other the other option is no uh, no walk in the park, right? The the option of feeling is, isolated is is super tough, and I I know a lot of people that are going through that at this very moment. This time is not only unprecedented, but this time is really an opportunity to understand that drumming can not only provide healing effects alone, associate producer of this project who I show in the bonus footage at the end of the clip, he's 85, never drummed in his life. And he was having migraines, couldn't, had to stop driving. And I said, look, just start keeping a beat, one hand. And I knew he would try because he's a meditator, amazing guy. And like several months later, I just checked in with him be right before we were starting this film and uh, to see if he wanted to, he had helped me with, with last year's film so much. And he had been drumming for like four months with one hand, dude, I, I never saw this. So I witnessed the healing and his wife, also confirmed that, you know they laugh he's upstairs because he he did he did start drumming with two hands and i gave him one of my kenyan drums as a, a gift from humanity because he stuck with it that's beautiful um so i love those stories and and I, i'm sure any of the people that you've talked to all these different uh drum facilitators uh that are in the movie that we all have these stories where there's there's someone on one day that never thought they could and then they started and just never stopped and it changed like it literally changes their life and i think mostly it's it's not just the brain changes that happen it's not just like the good mood changes but it's like a whole um, a whole new social circle that emerges because you make friends with these people that you're drumming with Yes, and, and that's the key, because as you say, we are social creatures, and if we, if we are cut off, if we are cut off from a social interaction, 
we suffer. And uh, I, I'm sure you know some some friends. We all have friends that isolate even before COVID. <laughs> They're a different creature. <laughs> Not that that's you know like if you're if you're an artist, if you're an artist, if you're a writer, especially, you need that alone time. But you also need together time. And uh, I've never seen anything like this whole group drumming world have so much success as a model for humanity with anything I, I've, and, and I, I feel very fortunate. I've traveled the world. I've seen so much, but I, you know, this is why I did the movie, Jim. I didn't get introduced to group drumming. I knew I bought Arthur's book in 2008, Drum Circle Spirit. I was like, yeah. Great book. And, and I had visions of doing this, but I do really well financially with multimedia consulting. And and it's a it's a tough gig getting drum group drumming gigs initially, but once you get it, and so anyway, one of my goals with this film is to not just only spread the news, but invite people to become a leader, a facilitator within their own organization. They already have groups. That's right. They already have a church. They already have schools. They already have businesses. You just got to give them a few drums. And and it's just my personal belief. Drum buying a lot of drums is a barrier to entry. You know, I, I checked Jeez. out, you know, the Beat the Odds program, which I wish um, the film that I was uh, fortunate to share some footage from American Rhythms which got to follow the beginning of Ping Ho and, and Remo starting to work with these fifth graders and what happened when you brought in group drumming through just one teacher, one counselor. And unfortunately, that movie never saw the light of day. And I'm hoping that this film of, of mine, of ours, will help bring that out because I can't imagine in 12 years with a movie like that, why the Department of Education would not be funding group drumming in the schools. The evidence is there. One hour a week? Are you kidding me? We have more time to, to learn pronouns or, or we need more time to learn pronouns. No, we don't. We need an hour of group drumming. And it, you know, it, when that happens, you know, what you talked about earlier is that, that it, it creates a different space and a different feeling within the group that's doing the drumming. And it gives them opportunities to see each other in a little bit of a different way. Maybe not so much as that person who sits in that desk over there, um, but it's that person that I, I made music with. And like we had some moments and we all were in, in the groove together. And, and like, like you're saying that the healing thing that happens, it's not that we're curing uh, some disease, uh, more than it is helping people just to feel more comfortable in their own skin. Yes. You know, and you have, so in this, this whole movie, like there's a, it's a movie about drum circles and it's a movie about how, um, you know, people all over the world do this, you know, but something, so there's this other thing that, that I'm hearing you say that's driving this where you want to get drums in the hands of people Tell me about this mission. I know you've got a mission for this whole thing. What, yeah. Tell me that idea. What so, is that? Idea? So this is this film is launching the five year mission to create a million drum circles. A million. I love it. How does that happen? <laughs> One, you need a lot of money. <laughs> and this is an area I'm very comfortable in because I know really wonderful people who lead big companies and philanthropists who fund great projects with the mission of creating a million drum circles. Yes, you must have a big buy-in. You know, people have to believe that group drumming is a viable platform for not only healing, but for bringing people together for greater joy and respect. See, this ties back into my movie last year where Otha, who's been a drum facilitator, drum circle facilitator for, you know, the last 10 years or so, or 
probably longer. He educated me. He informed me about what he's been doing locally here in the Berkshires of Western Mass and with huge success. And uh, I think when people know that uh, group drumming can provide this missing and, and very important healing on, a, on a, all levels, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, there's just not too many things we do. It's that desire to be the best you can be. You know, it's not about the competition. It's the fun and the joy. And group drumming brings that out. I feel like group drumming is something the whole world will benefit from. To get to the million drum circles in five years. So so there's money. What else? Uh, the the uh, most important part is what you do and what all the people in the film do, which is hold events that bring people together. Yeah. And so that requires scheduling. That requires having the willingness to lead. And this is why, for me, my simple approach, which may be naive, but again, based on my experience with corporate America and computing in the late 80s and, and 90, early 90s, way before the internet, right? Internet was 1994. I see people who want their organizations to run really well. They understand that whether it's a school, a church, a business, if people are happy being together, you've got a good organization. So Group true. Drumming can make that happen, man, in, in one session. Forget about every week. One session. People will never forget it. Right? And I went to a couple of Otha's drum circles here in the area because uh, I was so, I, I've known him for many years, but I didn't really experience, I think the first one he was telling me was uh, five or six years ago. You know, I just loved it. I loved that there were grandmothers and, and families and people that I would never imagine playing on a drum. So to get to a million drum circles, we need a million leaders and, and facilitation is an entire job training path. True. I mean, you know, you do it and, and so many people are uh, trainers to teach other people how to facilitate. My hope was just by seeing that three-year-old girl in the film, three years old, leading her parents how to yes. start and stop. That's as simple as you need to be to drum together. And you don't even need that, but there has to be a willingness, right? There has to be a reason why are you going to take time to do this in the beat the odds movie in 2008. Unfortunately, the rest of the, the staff that the one teacher, fifth grade teacher who had done the, the trial of beat the odds, they couldn't believe she would waste an hour on beating on cans and drums when they could be doing other more important things. And that's, I think an attitude that has to be changed and hopefully this film will help. The third part of, of creating a million drum circles is people sharing. So creating a YouTube channel where people can upload their videos of their drum circles, I believe is, you know, as a, not just a filmmaker, but as an educator, it helps when people can see themselves and share what they're doing that's fun with other people. Drum circles growing around the world over the next five years, that's the Academy Award-winning film I want to edit in 19 or uh, uh, 2025. I think you're, you're passing your audition for that job. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I've, I've gotten to see the early screening of this movie. And, you know, what you just said about how people just need to, to see it and see how how the participants react to it. This is something I've thought of s since the very first time I ever saw Drum Circle, is that, that if people really got past their preconceived notion of that this is a Grateful Dead hippie pot smoking situation, which it definitely has been in some places, right? Let's not yes. get around that bush. Uh, and also see how it can 
help people that are uh, suffering from addiction, or it can help people that are uh, that have disabilities, or that, like you said, the corporate groups see each other in a new way. It just it just changes the perspective, and it and it shifts you know the understanding of you know, what why are they doing that in the first place? Well, yes, it makes me feel good, but there's this whole other social piece that happens that really doesn't happen in any any other situation, in, including sports because it's all about the process of doing and it's not about anybody winning a game and the only end goal is that we were together yes and the, even the even better part i think is that there's not really a whole lot of talking that happens during the drum circle because it's <laughs> too damn loud and i think sometimes that's okay that's right good. to just have experiences with people because you don't know sometimes who, who's in that circle with you at first. And if you can kind of like let your guard down in that and like be in a space with somebody, it makes you more likely that you might strike up the conversation later. Absolutely. And, and um, my bass player, Rich Damone, who has played with some of the world's greatest jazz musicians, he watched the movie the other day and was so blown away. He said, this gives people a feeling of what it's like to be a professional musician. Exactly. It does. And sometimes better. <laughs> yes. Sometimes better. Yes. I'm so, so pleased that somebody like you with your knowledge and your, um, you know, the eyes that you have, because you've traveled the world, you've lived in other parts of the world and you understand that the world is is not just the US and that there's lots of different perspectives and ways of viewing things and i see i see that come out in the film like i i can i see a very diverse group of human beings men and women uh, people of all kinds of different orientations and it's all celebrated and it, it's cohesive it's like you weave this this sort of video tapestry together and it works because you take people into their hearts and you take people uh, to places that they've just never imagined or seen before. You know, I'm not, we're definitely not going to spoil it, but there, there is just, some, <laughs> there are, there are moments in this film. I, I mean, I was sitting at my computer uh, just in tears because I felt those moments before I've, I've witnessed people kind of get into some of the spaces that you, that you show and then just to, to hear, hear from them, you know, from in, in their own voices, like what, what it means to them. Um, it's undeniable at that point. You, you really start to see, oh, wow, this is a way of, you know, with all the disconnection we've got, you know, and all of the arguing and the pettiness, the meanness, this is an antidote. It, it's not the be all end all, but it is definitely an antidote to disconnection. Kudos to you for grabbing the bull by the horns, you know? <laughs> well, one of, one of my funniest uh, dreams, imagining Nancy Pelosi and Mitch McConnell in a drum circle. <laughs> oh my God. That... And, and what a great test. Would it work? I think it might. I'll volunteer my time to run that if, anybody, if no one else wants to do it. So, so just one other part of this whole mission of creating a million drum circles, it, Jim, it's probably going to be a hundred million. I, I'm, I'm really imagining this is going to go very viral. Social media, people, people are going to dig this. You know, this is not going to be like the new Fruit of the Loom underwear. You know, this is, <laughs> this is really going to be successful once people experience it and i think we can count on a lot of cohesiveness a lot of coherent bonding from just a little bit of of drumming together and i really believe as as it was interesting i asked every person all 30 people in this movie that I interviewed, I asked each one of them, so what do you think about the idea of five million or of a million drum circle? And not one person laughed. <laughs> I thought I was going to get a lot of kickback. You know, I didn't think, I mean, or a lot of, lot of, uh, oh no, that, that will never happen. We have, we have, I, as the best guess right now is there's 20 million, uh, 20,000 drum circles going on any given month mm -hmm. around the planet. And so my goal is to see, okay, 
where are those happening now for the first year? So we can, there's a couple really nice, you know, drum circle directories uh, that show drum circles in each state yep. and each country. Drum circle finder, right? Yeah. And, and uh, they have, I think I counted 1500. Yeah. But there's many more, of course, going on in therapeutic environments, retirement homes, where are they all going and kind of putting a call out year two, this would be 2022 double that, you know, fairly realistic. If this movie can get out through the media, you know, that's why this is, you're the first, this is the beginning, man. Hopefully this will be a New York times article within the next six months, because that's once it hits that level, we can start getting people excited. Because I think that even if you just watch the first 15 minutes of the film, which is what I released on Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. you get it. My, my own brother sent me a video the day after Thanksgiving of he and his wife and his two boys playing together to the Nam video on there with empty coffee cans. They were loving it. Coffee can was my first drum too. <laughs> yep. Well, this is the thing. One thing I've come to understand from, from leading people in music making is that you hear the term drum facilitator, a drum circle leader. What we really do is it's human being facilitation. How can we bring the, the best out in this group of people in this moment right now? And when we do that, the, the music becomes more harmonious. People feel comfortable and welcome and safe and all of those things. So it's like any other good facilitator that's like running a meeting or running a classroom. If you help those people to feel like they're welcome and safe and they're accepted here, uh, man, really good things happen. And one thing I tell my students who train with me is that you don't realize this, but you might be the only one who's ever done that for that particular person. What you're providing might be the only time they feel like they can be themselves. And you may never know that, but what a profound uh, gift to bring to someone without trying, right? By just, yes. by just being, I mean, at, at, the, at the core of what you're talking about is service. Yes. Right? We're being of service to the greater good. Yes. And right now that is so important. And the fact that almost anybody at any age, at any stage from any culture can take this up and lead a group is awesome. And I think that's, again, the most exciting part of this whole movie and, and this goal of creating a million drum circles in five years. Uh, part of me, as I've gotten feedback in the last uh, four days, has been a little, I've been surprised how many people love the film. It's really kind I'm of beyond, not. and I've had a couple good films. <laughs> I'm not surprised at all. It's really good. Because all of you guys who are in the film are sharing what you've experienced, which is the best that humanity has to offer, which is coming together. Yeah. You know, coming together, whether it, historically it's interesting to see how important religion has been sure. to bring people together, right? Right. And this kind of transcends that, right? It it's does. It's not about the religion. It's about your heart and your heart connecting with other hearts. And, and it really does happen in three to four minutes. <laughs> it it wow. does, you know, the real chemical wow. changes happen. And, you know, I, I think I might've told you this when we had our interview for the film is that I've, you know, I've witnessed, you know, people, many people becoming friends, you know, hundreds of people getting to know each other who still know each other. And um, in all my years, so I'm, I'm about 20 years into this, I've had four couples meet at an event and wow. are, are now married as a result. Wow. Like, like that level of connection is possible. Yeah. And that you're going to bring that you are, I mean, you're totally doing it. You're, you're bringing this to a mass audience. It's a gift to everybody. You know, we, we, you're going to turn people on to this idea that have never considered it before because you're going to normalize it for them. Tell us, first of all, how can people watch it? Where can they go? When should they look for it? We need to drum.com. 
we just go to we need to drum.com and you can watch the whole thing in its entirety. Expand your video to your entire screen and hang out with this thing. It is magnificent. And then, you know, when it comes out, it's where it's going is Netflix and Amazon and Apple. And then the big thing, Jim, is Lincoln Center. As soon as we can do movie time again and be in real theaters, Lincoln Center has three wonderful cinemas mm. that they make available to. You just have to have a little little bit of money, um, but you can rent the facility and it's a perfect place, especially to launch a film like this. So that's going to be the official world premiere at Lincoln Center as soon uh, as that's possible in 2021. I can't wait. That will be so much fun. Yeah, we'll hopefully get everybody everybody to come. Yeah, I'll send, that... you a, send you send you send you a a free hotel and airplane ticket. <laughs> awesome. I'll drive, but uh <laughs> That's right. You're in Pennsylvania. Yeah, I'll just it's drive close. on down for that one. That that sounds like a lot of fun people that are listening out there, is there any, any other way that they can be a part of this project? Yes. Anybody who wants to be an ambassador, someone who's promoting the film, promoting the mission of creating uh, a million drum circles in the next five years, if you're already uh, a drum circle facilitator or, or uh, you want to kind of be part of this project, you just email me and I'll put you on the ambassador list, uh, which is already growing since the film opened on uh, Thursday. John at oneheartmovies.org. And I'll make sure I include that in the show notes. Oneheartmovies.org. I believe is so important today after COVID coming together with a good heart, right? Not coming together to fight, not coming together to one up the other guy right. uh, or gal, but to really share our experience together as human beings is what my film company is all about. Well, you're doing it, man. Like you, you put your money where your mouth is, you go where you need to go and you shine a light on things that people need to see. And um, I really appreciate you. I appreciate everything that you're doing, uh, you know, for, for our community. We're, we're, we're small, but, but we are um, a big hearted group of, of folks, as I think you've already found out, who care about people. And I can see that you do, too. Um, so is there anything else you want to tell people before we jump off here? Well, the, of course, the, the most important thing is get a million leaders. So if you have not checked out the movie yet, please watch the movie, but also think about starting a drum circle in your area, your in your business, in your church, in your school, uh, wherever you, you gather, because this is something that's going to help any group of people feel closer. And the benefits are, are many, not just, uh, the simple act of having fun, but there really is a boost of uh, good health, good feeling. And that's what I feel the world needs the most. So if we can get a million new drum leaders, drum facilitators leading their own groups together over the next five years, the planet's going to be better. And hopefully that's going to expand. As some people say, well, why don't you go for a hundred million? Well, I think that's entirely possible. John, it has been an absolute pleasure. Everyone needs to go to we need to drum.com. Check out this movie. You'll be so glad that you did. And after you do, get on Facebook, all your socials, share it all over the place. Um, I think that you know, this is one of those ideas that, that people, um, once you see it, you'll resonate with it. It's going to make sense to you. And John, thank you again for being a part of this. I, I really appreciate you. Thank you, Jim. And thank you for all that you do. And just to give you a little feedback, people love what you say in the film. You know, oh. people really love how you express yourself. That's why I make that last thought that you were just sharing about, you never know, this could be the experience of a person that they never have had in their life just from, uh, being part of a drum circle. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Uh, I'm honored to be a part of it. 
And I'm excited to see what happens uh, for all of us uh, because, you know, I, I think when you do, when you do good, when you put out good in the world, good comes back. And um, uh, you're definitely doing that over and over again. So kudos to you. And hang on the line here for a second. I'm just going to close this out with everybody. And out there, if you're listening, everybody, just um, thank you again for tuning in. Thanks for hanging out with us. Go to we need to drum.com, Check out this movie. And most importantly, take extra good care of yourself right now. All right. That's Much right. love. And we will see you next time. <laughs>